live, are live. We are. Good morning, artists. Happy Wednesday. So we're back with our two ladies this morning. I managed to sneak in and do a little more detailing uh, with the ink. Finished the uh, the line art. Had a way too much fun with all of the fringe at the bottom. And we're gonna get ready to start coloring. We're gonna start off with the hair though. The hair is going to be pretty light hair and eyes. We had a pretty good thunderstorm here last night, which was kind of fun. Had a couple of really good booms. Wesker doesn't get bothered by them. He's really good about it. Um, and and while he didn't really make too much of a fuss either, he kind of perked his head up a little bit when we had a really nice big boom. But overall, they're. Uh, they're good outside of the thunderstorm. Wiley's gotten a little bit upset when we've had like fireworks and stuff go off in the neighborhood, but thunder doesn't seem to bother him too much as long as it's not like ridiculously loud. crazy with the colorful hair, but I do want to give her a little bit of a purple hint into her hair. Good morning, thugs. Thugs want hugs. It's been a little while since you joined us, but you're back. Hope you're doing all right in your area. Your family's doing good. We haven't had too much exciting happening around here. Haven't had any other animal adventures since our ones we were having last week. Which, you know, we're glad to not have, you know, World War Squirrel Part 2. I don't need another trip to the vet this month. Enjoying this nice weather now, though. It's supposed to be really nice today. And I'm super tempted to get outside, but at the same time, I know that we're gonna, we're gonna have more rain tonight move in. So anything, any cool art I do on the sidewalk's gonna get destroyed. But apparently we're supposed to clear up afterwards and not have any rain. So possibly this weekend, we'll see. Glad to hear you're doing good there, thugs. All's all's mostly quiet here. The uh, basement art studio is coming along. Have uh, a good area started to get cleared out. 
to do the work on and found, um, hunted up my easel so I can put some stuff up on that. It's probably got another uh, day or two of uh, just straightening up, cleaning, vacuuming, just getting the rest of the basement area uh, looking nice. Not that I'm going to show off too much of the basement, but better to work in a clean and organized environment. I'm actually hoping to hear pretty soon um, what decisions are going to be made for kind of a closing up the school since we're not coming back again to do classes. Uh, normally we teachers get some time to um, come in and you know clean our rooms and put stuff away and get it organized so it's easier for the maintenance crew to come through and do their stuff and do their cleaning. I haven't heard anything about that yet. I definitely want to be able to uh, do a little organizing now. When we had that first Friday called off, um, it was definitely a surprise. And then we were in the following Monday to prepare um, the packets and such to go home for everybody. So I was able to grab a couple of things, do a little bit of, of cleaning up, but you know, even then we'd still were saying we would be closed for just a couple of weeks. And we'd even still been told that we would be able to get into the school possibly as we needed to, and then they said, no, that's not going to happen, nobody can come in. So there's stuff I'd like to retrieve, please. When you students, I'm sure that you weren't able to get your stuff out of your locker, so... I bet hopefully nobody left any, like, stinky shoes or food, because, oh my gosh, can you imagine? No, thank you. Food left over spring break? No, thank you. So the goal here is I want her hair to kind of resemble the shade of the moon. Um, I had envisioned pretty early on with her that she um, was going to have kind of darker skin. Um, a lot of the moon goddess type artwork you see, especially for um, kind of like European style art, um, moon goddesses tend to be very, very pale. And it's understandable, it's the moon, you know, it's it, it's nighttime and, you know, she stands out for sure. But I wanted something in her design that felt a little more international, I suppose, that you know, she could have be representing the moon for more than just a Western European culture. So she's still going to have this super pale hair to represent the moon itself. And then we're going to give her a little darker skin tone. I haven't decided yet with the other planets whether or not uh, they're going to have um, kind of like that alternative alien skin tone happening.
Like, I don't know if I want to necessarily give Mars, like, you know, red skin. I'll make Neptune blue. We'll see. Nothing set in stone yet. It's not purple, but I want to use that as a little bit of a uh, little shading. But you know, it probably feels like it goes against it. I was just saying it. I wasn't sure about alternative coloring, but you know, people change their hair color all the time. We haven't gotten to the stage in humanity yet of people dyeing their skin blue. I don't know that I would go blue anyway. It would be a good color if you could completely change your, your skin color to something like, like the dye our skin the way we dye our hair. There would be somebody who would do a rainbow. That's for sure. Head to toe rainbow. I don't think I could do that though. I don't even dye my hair, so I probably wouldn't even dye my skin. I did dye my hair sort of once. Nothing permanent. Uh, some friends and I were going to go to a concert. It was like in high school. It was one of the first concerts that I had ever gone to uh, for a band called the, uh, the Goo Goo Dolls, which were a great um, 90s rock band. Still one of my favorite songs ever was by them. And my friends and I were going to, we were hanging out, kind of getting ready to have some fun before we would leave for the concert uh, my friend's mom was going to take us and they got it into their heads that they wanted to, to dye their hair and their mom was very uh, the mom whose house we were at she was you know very chill and, and um, you know would let us <laughs> she was the kind of mom to let us get away with that and not really worry about what our parents might think so my friends are doing Kool-Aid dyeing where you use Kool-Aid to color your hair yeah, my friends were all getting, you know, streaks and stuff done in their hair and were bugging me, bugging me. And, you know, at that time, had the family rule of, you know, you can't, don't, no tattoos, don't color your hair. Who is that? Sauls? Hello, Sauls. Welcome. Welcome to my stream. But I let them convince me and ended up putting two uh, pale purple streaks in my hair. I had long bangs, so I did uh, one on each side of my head. And it was fun, but it was also, it also felt very kind of strange, you know? Like, it, it was fun in the way that, like, you know, you, you dress up for Halloween. Like, you, you put on, you do something crazy, but ultimately, you know, it's going to go away. It's going to go away. And, and the Kool-Aid diet definitely was something that would go away. But I got home, and my mother was not happy. She's, she wants, you know, she was trying to not show how uh, mad she was. But, you know, you, you can just, there's some people you can just tell in their face when they're not happy. And I'm the same way. I can, I can get very quiet and, uh, I, I, I don't know, just, I guess it looks stormy, I guess would be the best way. You just get this very stormy look in your face, like clouds are boiling over. So I knew she wasn't happy with me about it. Um, and of course, then, you know, karma hits and the purple faded. 
into like a gray. So it looked like I had two long gray streaks in my hair. Like I was, you know, prematurely turning gray and getting old. And it, it, it didn't put me off to dyeing my hair. I'm not like afraid to do it, but it definitely had that feeling of, you know, why am I doing this? Why did I do this? Was it really worth it to, you know, be purple and then have to let, to live with the streaks until they finally faded and, and grew out? I mean, it, those streaks stayed in for, I want to say, a couple of weeks. The color faded pretty quickly, but the gray streaks were there for a while. So then I would look at, you know, other people who had dyed their hair and as it starts to grow out and then you see their roots. And if you want to do new bright colors, you gotta like bleach your hair first and you know, the damage that that could possibly cause. I know they've got a lot better methods now that are a lot less damaging, but still, I just don't think I could bring myself to do it. I think because I don't like the idea that I wouldn't be able to grow, go back to my natural color. And I know that, you know, hair, hair will grow out I and mean, eventually it will, but, you know, if it, if it took like a year or something for my hair to go back to normal, that's why I like wigs. Like, I feel like having pink hair today. Let me put on my pink wig. It's Halloween. I'm going to dress up like a pumpkin queen. Let me get my orange wig out. Yeah, thugs, this is our, our moon lady. Could you tell because of all of the moon designs on her? <laughs> When we started drawing her, uh, the joke was that since the sun lady has all of these little like triangles, um, everyone's going to have to have their their shape that's going to become like their theme on their outfit. Like you already know that uh, a Saturn is going to have to have so many rings and bracelets and necklaces and just round around everything going around. That might be an, an off-stream thing, or a, uh, I'll, I'll video the process of drawing them and do like a, like a time-lapse, like a sped up. It's getting a little bit low. Might have to uh, hunt down another one. Not another. We're good now. Pretty decent. I'm not unhappy with this. Get my giant brush out again. <laughs> when are we going to have an adventure, thugs? I don't know. The, uh, 
the dogs, I think, I know uh, the, the baby's outside somewhere. You know, our adventures are, our, our adventures are not scripted. <laughs> this is, this is true reality TV over in, in Ms. Sean's house. Um, we do, we do not schedule uh, the squirrel attacks um, or the snake visits. And there's really no way to, um, to predict the zoomies. The zoomies come and go as they please. The other day during um, our, our cleanup time, our uh, down organized the basement. Um, you know, the dogs want to go outside, but if we were in the basement, we don't want to leave them out in the yard where we can't see them or can't let them in or, you know, anything like that. Deal, deal with adventures as they come up. So we're down um, just doing some cleaning and organizing, and I just hear this crazy thumping noises. And it just, it's back and forth and back and forth. I'm like, what is that dog doing? Wesker was down with us, but uh, Wiley was off on his own, and he was all the way on our second floor. Just, I don't even know what he was doing. It sounded like he was just tearing back and forth between all the rooms. So I start to head to the stairs to, you know, head up to see what was going on. And I just hear him stampede all 40 pounds of him down the stairs just all the way down and then go tearing across from uh, our front room into our, our little family living room area and I finally get up there and, and he stops dead and he's just looking at me with that expression of uh oh <laughs> I see it a lot in the classroom I hear a little ksh of something falling, and I turn around, and there's, you know, like, an entire table of people is just looking at me with these super wide eyes, like, trying to look so innocent. It's like, you just did something, didn't you? And that's what he looked like. He looked like he had just been doing something he shouldn't have, and he was trying to give me the, the innocent puppy face. And I couldn't find anything, so it wasn't like he had actually busted anything. Um, I think he just... I don't know. He just gave himself a case of the zoomies and just took off with them and then stopped it. So in our sun lady picture, I ultimately ended up using a little bit of teal in her outfit. So these, some of these little triangles, I gave her just, just a hint of this teal, this little bit of a cool color, which I really liked. Was he dreaming? I, I don't think he was dreaming. He was, he was running around. Maybe he was upstairs dreaming and then uh, woke up and just zoomed out of there, but he was definitely awake by himself. But in any case, um, used the teal color in our sun lady so kind of like a cool color added in and in the design um, that my awesome buddy Dell did of this moon lady she had added a little bit of this kind of yellow into it and that's usually not a color that you put on the moon but I really like that just very subtle warm tone and the rest of her outfit was a little bit darker. So we're sneaking a little bit of that into some of the design. Just a little. I almost don't want it to look like it's yellow. I just want it to look like uh, it's, it's warm, if that makes sense.
Big brush. I like that. Subtle. Just a hint. Alright, now we're gonna get into uh, more of the jewelry because most of these multiple crazy circles that I decided to do because I'm a crazy person. torturing myself this way. <laughs> Let's give her jewelry though, these things. I'm going to give these just a tiny hint of that warmer yellow tone. Just on those rings. these tiny little white beads. this little stripe happening around the bottom of her skirt with the intention that that was going to end up having more circles in it. But I feel like that might be too much now. for the weird noise of my sharpener. I should uh, get a little hand cranker. It's a little bit quieter. I'm just going to sneak a little bit of gray in here just to help make it look a little bit more rounded. Years and years ago, I created a original character, uh, an elf character, and got really into doing her uh, kind of jewelry and armor. Got into doing a lot of these kind of circles and stuff, so I felt like I got really good at making things looking kind of rounded from, from doing that character. Learning how to do you know, gemstones and stuff. Things like this earring, making it look rounded.
especially is going to be I have a cool little gemstone here. but a slightly different purple. So I've been using a kind of a warmer kind of lilac color and now I'm going to bring in kind of a, a light blue violet because I want this to be a little more unique compared to the rest. Just a little bit of this dark and purple. Mm -hmm. Give it a little bit of a shadow. Wow, you were just outside not that long ago. Hi, baby. You have to see this. Sneaking under the table. There he is. Wiley. He's a tired baby. <laughs> Fine, I don't get to go outside. I'm going to pout. He should come closer and lie on my feet. Like a good boy. All right. So moving on. Let's get into doing this little shawl first. Start off with a lighter color. And just do kind of a, uh, a light all over to start with. So, just like when I did the Sun Lady's skin, I like to go through and not pushing too hard, just doing a, a light, all over kind of coloring, just to get it all started, just to plan out um, what colors are going to go where, make sure everything looks good, and then we'll go in and, and start to solidify things. So this is the same purple that I used a little bit in the hair. So that kind of will help to tie things in a little, but then we're gonna introduce some other uh, shades. We're gonna keep the shawl pretty light, and then the rest of our outfit will start getting a little bit darker. Bugs, I would love to do an animation, but that is some serious, serious work. 
I mean, if you're talking like the traditional draw, picture, draw, picture, draw, picture kind of thing, that is just, that takes so long. And I know there's programs where you can like uh, create a character and use the program to make parts of it move, uh, like especially like the old Flash animation. But again, that's I have no idea how much time that takes. I mean, just doing a still drawing like this. I've been working on this, you know, for a couple of days now. I mean, there's a reason that people go to school to be animators. It's, it's a lot to learn. It's very different than just like this, where I'm drawing this way. I mean, that's why when you see a lot of animation, they don't have this kind of like gradual light to dark shading. They don't do that kind of gradient change between colors. It tends to be very solid. Um, and any kind of shading is usually in like a block so they'd pick up like here is where the shadow is going to be and it'd be one color there and it'd be a slightly darker color here and that would be it there wouldn't be the kind of um, slow blending that I like to do because it's just so it, you just you there's no way to keep it even from one image to the next I'd actually watched a special years ago years ago it was about Disney and the animation studios at Disney. And they're showing like all the different jobs that you could possibly have um, working for them. And it was pretty awesome, but the, the one job that I thought, I'm like, that that would be the one that I could do was doing a uh, the kind of creature designer. And they were showing this big room full of desks art supplies just everywhere like I mean you would you would look at it and like any art teacher would would just die to have that kind of a room because it had everything you could want there was clay and pencils and paint and markers just everything and the whole point of the room was that there were just people that would come in and every day they would just sit and create characters and they had, um, were showing, because this was around the time, um, I believe it was right around the time that A Bug's Life had come out. And one of the people was showing how they had created, you know, little insect characters. And they just, they make them up and they throw them in a file. And when the Disney producers and executives and stuff were like, okay, we are ready to make a movie. They would go down and look through, and go to like, the file cabinet of characters. So there'd be like, here is the princess file cabinet. And they just go Ch -ch 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 through the files, pick out the design that they like, and then they bring it to their actual animation crew and be like, this is the character we want. So the people who do it, they don't really get a whole lot of credit as the designers. Um, they just come up with like the concept art. It was like a concept art room. And that was just so fascinating to me. And just the idea of being able to come in every day and just create these characters and just kind of almost play. I was like, that sounds amazing. And I'm sure it's nothing like how my young self remembers it. Um, and I'm sure there were a lot of things about it that were not explained in the video. But the idea of just that being your job is just to do stuff like this all day to create a character, draw it, that's it. And I imagine it would be fun to see your character then kind of brought to life, but I'm sure there's so many changes that would go into it. So, I mean, if they were doing a story about a character from the moon, let's say, and they went into my file and they found, you know, they found this girl. There would definitely be things they'd have to change, you know, especially for a Disney movie. We can't have the skirt be that high. <laughs> Bring that down. 
they would probably get rid of all of the little fringe things because that would just be such a pain to animate. That's so much to consider. So I'm sure that there would be things that, um, there are good points to it and difficult points, but as much as I would love to be a part of a animation project, I don't think I have the patience to commit to a character like that for so long and to have the patience to, to do every single motion. Um, I could see doing something like a claymation where you create a clay character because it, that's a, you already have the character, you just have to move it. Um, it's not the same as drawing it over and over and over again. I think that's why I never was really able to um, commit to making like an actual comic. That was another thing I considered doing for a long time, was to try to do a, uh, an actual comic book. But again, it, I mean, it, it takes so much discipline to commit to doing those characters for so long. Um, that's why I have so much respect for um, my friends who do comics, my sister and her friend Del, who work on a comic together. Del does the art, and just being able to keep those characters consistent is crazy. I mean, I have my, my little comic series of the magical classroom of Miss S. And even then, when you look from one to the next, uh, the characters are not consistent. I mean, even just the character that is meant to be me, the hair changes all the time. The uh, face shape will change. It's gone from being, you know, super, um, like kind of almost miniature in the, uh, in the anime community. We call it super deformed SD or chibi style. Chibi means little, where you draw this little character, kind of like. Do you want some candy paper? So where you might have a regular character, or even better yet, we'll just even use her. So if this is her regular look, a a chibi version is much wider, much rounder, big eyes, like almost ridiculously fill the whole head size, tiny nose. So you might still have a lot of the same features, but it would be big and exaggerated. But then you'd, it would be kind of offset with these tiny little, little bodies. Almost like, it's like, here's your character and here is like the baby version. That's what the chibi is. do like little chibi versions of myself as a part of this comic and even then they just still wouldn't look the same even just between one panel and the next would be difficult to get everything matching but of course more than any of that probably what's preventing me from looking into animation or looking into comic books is is that I honestly just like being a teacher. I know it's, in, she's crazy. She's been in quarantine too long. She likes it. But I really do like uh, working with students. I mean, I've, I've always um, gotten along with younger kids. You know, I had, in a lot of cases, I was usually the, the older cousin in a family reunion. And I'd be playing with all the younger kids and 
you know, coming up with games to keep him entertained and whatnot. You know, I did a lot of babysitting in my teenage years for, you know, kids in the neighborhood, and it's just always been a thing for me to, you know, work with kids. <laughs> the changing of the dog guards. <laughs> Wiley goes out, Wesker comes in. Alright, so now that I've gone through and done all of the kind of base coloring, and you can kind of see a little bit of the, the dark and light going on. Now's where I start to come in and, and really fill it in. Let's actually start with our darker color. Get the darkest areas, the ones that we want the most drama. So after I finish this with you guys, I'm gonna have some lunch, and then I gotta go and do some actual, do some more recording of uh, my class that I'm taking for uh, cert recertification, become ESL certified. Uh, we're doing a presentation, so I have to make a, a PowerPoint. I think I rambled about PowerPoint yesterday a little too long. They want me to do a uh, presentation that includes a voiceover. So I'll have to uh, drink some tea, rest my voice. No music for this one. Can't have any jazz in the background. And go and uh, record my project to turn in. I procrastinated a little bit. So you students don't really... No, we teachers, we do have to take classes. We do know what it's like for you. Um, and sometimes we procrastinate. I was actually working on it last night while we had, uh, we had a little movie night. We watched um, Birds of Prey, which is a comic movie about Harley Quinn. It was bad, don't see it. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't waste your money on it. I love Harley Quinn. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I grew up with the Batman animated series, and that's where Harley Quinn uh, originated, wasn't it? The animated show, not in the comic books. The comic books uh, eventually adopted her because her popularity in that show grew so much. She was a great character, and then the comics just kind of took over and... Yeah, you know, changed it up and did some other things with it. That's fine. Uh, but the movie is the movie is definitely strange. Would not would not recommend. We had that when I was spent most of the night working on my homework. And I'll finish up my presentation and then get to all my other stuff I gotta do. It's probably been the, uh, as, as, as much as having to be in quarantine has sucked. I mean, it, it, it stinks that, you know, you can't go to the movie theater, you can't go out to eat and all that kind of stuff. You can only eat in, um, you have to gear up if you're going to the grocery store. I don't think I've been... I haven't been to the grocery store in like a week and a half just because we planned our meals well and bought things that would last. You know, we had 
fresh fruit for the first couple of days. Um, apples and stuff that last a little bit longer. Or, or we're going through those now. Frozen veggies, breaking those out. But on the positive, it means I have a lot of time that I can work on my homework if I need to. Okay, this didn't look pretty dramatic. original character that I was telling you about earlier that had all the jewels and stuff. She also had a long skirt with lots of waves and folds that I love to put into it. So this is another thing that's very nostalgic is these very rounded shade and curves. Oh, don't hit the camera. I immediately hit it. Oh no. I think I just got it viewing upside down. There we go. <laughs> there, that's your adventure, guys. I tipped it over. Open that up just a little bit. Right. Not too much. This part could be a little darker. Not so much white in here because this part is. Kind of in the background. I'm gonna put just a little bit along this outside edge. reasons why I'd like to be able to get back into school is so I have uh, a wire shelf, like a freestanding little shelf. It's meant to be something that goes in um, like a locker to help split up locker space. And I use it to support um, my document camera at school. But because it's wire and it's, you know, it's got a grid, it's got openings, that would make it really easy for me to put my cell phone on for doing the streaming. A lot more stable than my little tripod that I have right here. I think it would 
allow for you guys to see things a lot better. And I wouldn't have to worry nearly so much about bumping and causing problems that way. I probably still would bump into it. I shouldn't say that. I'm going to end up bumping into it more now that I said it. But I'd love to be able to get that to be able to work with my studio. Otherwise, we'll come up with a, a different option. That'll be nice because it's a, a bigger table, got more space down there. So it looks like we'll have just enough time to finish up the shawl today. So not too bad between hair, jewelry, and this big bit of fabric. So hopefully what that'll mean is that tomorrow we'll be able to work on the rest of her outfit finish up with her skin. Probably won't have a chance to work on it too much during the day with the homework I need to get done, but the good news is all the homework for my week this week is due by tomorrow, which means that I will be finished up and have a nice open weekend. finish up the basement area, have that ready for next week. Still haven't heard yet what we're going to be doing class-wise, but I think what the governor had said was that the schools need to come up with a plan to implement by the 28th, which seems like a long time. So I'm not sure whether we're going to be getting information to start doing teaching right away on Monday or if we're going to be starting our plans then. So my plan though is still, unless I have to go into school, is to still do the stream. So still plan on me being up every day doing this, not this specifically, but doing the streaming. Um, and then if I have a day where I'm going into the school, I might end up skipping it. So we'll see. Maybe I'll just stream from the school. Super boring for you guys. Uh, here's Miss Schoen cleaning.
how dramatic that is. Beautiful. Okay. So that's probably gonna be about as far as we're gonna get today on this. She's looking nice. All right, so it's always tradition now, guys. We're going on a dog hunt. Wesker's inside, right? Yeah. I'm hunting for the old dog first. He went this way. I don't see. Maybe he's hiding upstairs. Here we go, guys. This is a, this is a real. Don't don't look at the mess. Keep your eyes down. <gasps> I found him. What are you doing here? Hi, buddy. Wesker's sleeping at the top of the stairs. He's a good boy. All right, creeping back down. Watch out for the toys. We gotta go find the baby. There he is. Found him. Being a good boy. Where are you going? <laughs> All right, everybody. I hope you have a uh, good rest of your day. Happy Wednesday. Stay safe, stay clean, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye-bye.